Now, without any further ado, I'd like to introduce you all to our keynote speaker for the evening, the Honorable Pauline Russo Cutter, Mayor of San Leandro. On the school board, Mayor Cutter was first elected to the City Council in 2010 before being elected mayor in November of 2014. Throughout her tenure, the mayor has been known for her ability to bring people together to help move San Leandro forward. And with that, let's extend the mayor a warm welcome to the podium. Instead of just hearing it from me, I thought we'd do things a little differently than in the past years. 
And because seeing is believing, I'd like to begin our evening with a short video featuring the City Council talking about the number of exciting projects and initiatives happening in our city. So let's take a look. with Kaiser and look forward to deepening our relationship with them for many years to come. 
With the help of an all-volunteer Chiefs Advisory Board, they analyzed the report and presented their findings. I'm confident that our police department is leading the way and takes the opportunity to create positive relationships with every interaction. That said, I'm proud to share that San Leandro continues to be safe, as evidenced by our 5% drop in crime citywide. We prioritize service to ensure that if crime ever happens to you, our police department is present and ready to assist you in any way they can. The department also has invested time and resources to expand their community outreach and communication strategy to ensure that the department is even more responsive and involved with the community. And that's evidenced by bringing programs such as a great program to our schools. We pride ourselves in our community touch, our ability to connect one on with residents. I've attended community and neighborhood meetings along with our police chief and our city staff to talk about community policing and to provide updates on happenings in the neighborhoods all over San Leandro. And speaking of leadership, we have new leadership in our police department. A San Leandro native, Jeff Tudor, is now serving as the interim police chief. He has over He has over 22 years experience in the department, working his way through the ranks, and has deep community ties. I welcome Chief Tudor and look forward to working with him in the future. And please join me in thanking him again. Okay. A challenge that I mentioned to you last year was the elimination of the city's redevelopment agency. Four years ago, this program was channeling about $15 million into our city for the economic development, making its dissolution a huge loss to us. This past year, the city prevailed in its legal battles against the state and retained $9 million in funding for important future infrastructure projects. Although some of them will take several years to complete, I'm looking forward to the paving of San Leandro's last dirt road, Eden Road, which will improve traffic flow, benefiting the businesses in the area, and also the residents of the Davis Rest neighborhood. Other important projects that are planned for the future will include median and streetscape improvements on Doolittle, and traffic calming improvements to the northern portion of MacArthur Boulevard. After four years, the city has finally received the approval from the state to proceed in the sale or transfer of former redevelopment agency properties, and that will open up significant development sites downtown. The San Leandro Tech Campus, Maria Alta, and the Village are the downtown projects that have become an emblem of innovation in our city. I'm happy to share that there is more to come. Earlier this year, the City Council approved an agreement for development of the former CBS site at East 14th and Cowlitz. The project is expected to include ground floor retail and approximately 90 residential units, providing much needed new housing and helping to draw activity to the critical intersection. Development is downtown is certainly a change in the landscape. But also, have you noticed how clean it is? It really has done. <laughs> we can thank our continued partnership with the San Leandro Improvement Association for these great improvements to the area. They continue to build on their success with maintenance and security and the activation of public spaces to make the downtown more inviting and more enjoyable for the entire community. We even have an additional police officer that is fully dedicated to the area. The Downtown Association is also an important partner. It's working with the city to continue to bring those community events such as Sausage and Suds, It's a Wonderful Night, and the Farmer's Market. The progress seen in this area has been immense, and we couldn't be here without the work of those partners. We also are working to expand a very successful and free public Wi-Fi network downtown. The network runs off of the Lit San Leandro backbone and will be expanding to the areas around Casa Peralta and the Cherry Festival this spring. San Leandro has welcomed the arrival of dozens of new businesses in the past year. Retail activity began to pick up with the completion of the Village Shopping Center downtown, developed by Innisfree in partnership with the city. That project includes Pete's Coffee and Habit Burger and it quickly led to the opening of Chipotle in a long vacant storefront across the street. This year we can expect the opening of Sons of Liberty, which will bring a great new dining option, and the cooler, a tap room serving craft beer. 
In the south end of town, DSW and Alta Beauty opened at Bayfair Center, and Nothing But Cakes opened at Greenhouse Marketplace. And even more retail activity will be arriving soon. Living Spaces is close to opening their furniture to showroom in the former 95,000 square foot Kmart location. San Leandro continues to be a desirable location for manufacturing and tech companies as evidenced by our 1% vacancy rate in the manufacturing area. We're also a regional leader in specialty food and beverages, including 21st Amendment, who filled the long vacant Kellogg's factory, and Joe Cleophus Cleely and Drake's to form our craft beer cluster. E. Copia Farms, a company that produces high-end herbs and microgreens to fuel the Bay Area's foodie culture, and Eat Club, a company that provides food services to many of the Bay Area's largest tech companies. <coughs> Moving west, we continue to make solid progress on transforming our shoreline. In the months to come, we'll be holding some public meetings to obtain input for the design of the project. The last time we invested this much energy and funds in our shoreline was about 50 years ago, and I'm excited that 2016 will be a big year for the city because we're now getting into the details regarding phasing and financing at the shoreline. The city and Cal Coast, who's the developer, will be adding significant infrastructure to our city, including a conference center and hotel, restaurants, housing, and a new Mulford Branch library. Our plan is to have the new and exciting destination for everyone, young and old, to come. The project will also see important safeguards to ensure the resiliency of the development as sea level rises. We have these closets for, for my health. <laughs> as we look forward to the future, our city cannot ignore the challenges of housing, affordability, and homelessness. As the regional economy continues to boom and the cost of living in the Bay Area soars, it is now more important than ever for the city to ensure that our residents aren't left behind. We're developing a study that identifies the needs of our community as well as services offered by local and regional providers. It is the results of this research and the community feedback that will allow us to view our service gaps and prioritize our resources accordingly. Our council remains committed to ensuring a safety net is in place for all residents and doing so by leveraging existing funds and services and looking for creative new ideas. This year, we granted $318,000 to local community agencies that provide a health and human services to residents in need. Additionally, city staff always searches for outside funding to leverage. To that effect, city staff secured $648,000 in grants. This safety net is crucial so that all San Leandrans can live and thrive in our city. Housing is also a major concern Bay Area-wide. While there are numerous reasons for the crisis, the lack of supply is a major driver. The number of new housing units produced in the city of San Leandro, as well as in other Bay Area cities, is failing to keep up with demand. There is a need for new housing of all types, including workforce and market rate homes and apartments. There has been increased interest in sites around the city from housing developers in the past two years. As a built-out city, the majority of opportunities are in our downtown area. Currently, we have about 700 new units in various stages of the planning session process, with an additional 350 residential units planned for the marina. We are also setting the stage to update the city's inclusionary zoning ordinance, which requires that 15% of new for sale housing will be affordable. Over the next year, the city council will be evaluating this ordinance as a mechanism to create more affordable housing. We remain concerned about tenant protections and unfair displacements of our residents. The rent review ordinance, which was revised several months ago, includes some protections to tenants, and I remain committed to explore more ways to address tenant and housing issues. Given the difficulty of the rental market, finding housing for the chronically homeless can be extremely challenging, too. I'm proud to announce the creation of the San Leandro Compact. An agreement between Building Futures and the Rental Housing Association to provide needed housing for 25 of San Leandro's chronically homeless residents, including wraparound services. This compact is the first of its kind in Northern California, and I'm thrilled to see the positive feedback from the community. The program launched just two weeks ago, and we've already housed two, pe two people so far.
The availability of housing is just one piece of the puzzle. The city has invested in partnerships with service providers so that we have a continuum of care that includes a wanting shelter, meals and showers, child care, health care for the homeless, and coordinated care with San Leandro Hospital. San Leandro's demographic profile continues to change as the city grows, and we are ranked as one of the most diverse cities in the nation. The needs of those who live, work, and visit San Leandro are evolving, and we are working to address this challenge. We continue to expand multilingual messaging in our meetings, documents, and outreach efforts. We are excited to announce that we have relaunched our community newsletter that will be available quarterly and online and in print. And as you know, we've also launched three social media pages and have people joining every day. Our Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram accounts are growing, and we're gathering feedback on the type of information you want reported. I invite everyone to search for our pages and interact with us online. We look forward to connecting with you. <coughs> Arts and culture from the back, they form the backbone of a vibrant, well-rounded community. And San Leandro is placing a major emphasis on expanding public art and culture. In the years ahead, we will complete another round of utility box art, both including wraps and live painted boxes and long overdue redesign of many of our decorative street banners. We also look forward to the installation of an interactive exhibit in Joaquin Plaza that has been designed through a partnership with the San Francisco Exploratorium. We continue to invest in our historical assets, such as the Casa Peralta, and to beautify our spaces, such as the artistic additions made to 880 Davis and Marina interchanges. The San Leandro Arts Commission will be hard at work this year on a public arts master plan. This community-driven project will ensure that we have long-term vision for art throughout San Leandro, ensuring that we continue to create great art projects in the future. And speaking of art, Truth and Beauty statue will be in, <coughs> installed in the San Leandro Tech Cabinet later this year. This 50 the 55-foot steel sculpture will be the landmark piece that will bring international attention to our city. Stationed right next to the downtown San Leandro BART station, Truth is Beauty will ensure that every BART passenger knows that they are passing through a very special city. Our commitment to combating climate change is stronger than ever. The city is working on a comprehensive energy and water resources saving program, covering multiple municipal operations that include converting all remaining street lights to LED, installing LED lighting in city buildings and facilities, integrating lighting controls and sensors in city buildings so that we can monitor the usage and control lighting remotely, furnishing 14 city parks with water-based irrigation controls, and exploring new ways of utilizing treated water, and installing a solar project at our water pollution control plant. And finally, following the success of last year's Solar Week, the city began exploring the development of a citywide renewable energy microgrid project with an international energy company, furthering our legacy as a smart city. We received word this Friday that the Zip Power of San Leandro is being recommended for a $1.5 million grant from the California Energy Commission that enables us to partner with OSI Soft and PG&E and other institutions to design a sustainable and resilient community through a renewable energy microgrid. Woo! And we will continue to explore ways to give San Leandrians a choice of energy suppliers by taking a close look at the county's community choice energy <coughs> plan. By exploring these two options, we position ourselves as a resilient and independent city with the ability to control our energy future. We continue to build on our successes, and I'm excited to report that we launched our groundbreaking downtown Wi-Fi system and expanding it now to our senior center right here, as we are sitting here. I'm also excited to report that 15 schools will soon be connected to Lit San Leandro, the city's fiber optic network. Okay, in conclusion, we are a city that balances challenges with proactive solutions. We were facing a financial cliff, and Measure HH allowed us to maintain our service levels and invest in our infrastructure. We continue to work closely with our city neighbors, 
our state and federal partners, and the community so that we can position ourselves for the future. We invest in our partner organizations to make sure that we can build a city that our children and our grandchildren want to call home. We are proud of what makes San Leandro such a livable city. Our unique combination of geography, services, and people make us a city that we are today. I'm excited to explore new opportunities and challenges this year and to make San Leandro proud. And in closing, I'd like to thank our sponsors, Innisfree Company, AC Transit,